Moving into a new house is always weird, and when my family and I moved into this old one, it was just as you'd expect. Creaky floors, weird new smell we weren't used to, and all the other things that came with an old house. The first few weeks were fine, the kids enjoyed having their own rooms, and my wife and I had a huge new one. It was perfect, as far as we could tell. After a couple more weeks went by, everything was going pretty good. I had just gone home from work and I felt like I could eat a horse. I moved to the kitchen and started to rummage around, trying to find something to consume. I was planning on making a sandwich, but I couldn't seem to find any bread. I eventually found some, but there was only the ends left. I slumped down into the chair, defeated. It'd be a cold day in hell before I actually ate the worst parts of the bread. I eventually gave up and decided that I'd just take my family out for dinner, when my wife walked in with groceries in hand. I moved to help her and asked, Did you get any bread? We're all out. I just bought some, she replied. That's when I heard shuffling from down the hall. I looked to see that it was my son. He came out of his room and walked up to me. Before he could even say anything, I said, I didn't even know you were here. I looked over to my wife and said, That's probably where the bread went. Yeah, I got a ride from Chris, so I didn't have to catch the bus. We were playing some video games, but that's besides the point. There's some flies in my room, and do you know where the fly sweater is? He asked. It's hanging over there. I bet you guys ate real good, I asked. My son looked at me somewhat puzzled, but went back to his room. Let it go, my wife said. We'll make something for dinner. Nah, I replied. Once Vanessa gets home, I'm going to take you and the kids out for dinner. A few days went by and all was well. But as the days went on, I realized that the fly swat was being used more and more. It was for good reason though. These big black flies would just sporadically show up. Then my family would go on to massacre the pests. That was until we somehow lost the fly swatter. Then the flies started to come in droves. In one day, there were about 20 of the little bastards flying around. What made it so much worse, they weren't small flies. They were big, about the size of a kidney bean, and you'd be able to hear them buzzing from across the room. After killing the flies for about 30 minutes, I got sick of swatting the buggers with my sandals, and I went to buy another fly swatter. While I was at the store, I found some fly tape, and I picked that up too. I also bought some bug spray to deal with the pests. When I got home, my wife and kids were panting, flip-flops and rolled up newspapers in hand. I looked at them and chuckled and said, Looks like you guys had a nice workout. Unfortunately for me though, my wife didn't find that funny, and decided that when the fly showed up again that I'd have to be the one to kill them. All by myself. I bet my wife was real glad that I was the only one on fly killing duty, because the next day the little bastards came back with a vengeance. The fly tape that I had put up was completely black by the time the kids came home, and there were still some flies buzzing around. Taking down the fly tape was one of the single most disgusting things that I've ever done. I moved to grab the tape from the top, but my foot slipped on something, which I think was a dead fly that I'd sprayed, and I reached out to grab something to stop my fall. My one hand landed on the counter, but my other hand was still in the air, and I reached for the closest thing next to me, which was the fly tape. I felt like I wanted to vomit as my hand closed around it and I could feel the flies pop under my grip. I recoiled back, flailing, trying to get this disgusting thing off my hand while stepping on more dead flies, and swinging my hand, sending more of the flies that weren't attached to the tape properly shooting off in wild directions. After that experience, I was done with these flies, and I decided that I'd just get the house fumigated. What annoyed me to no end though was that I never knew how the flies got in. All the doors would be closed, the windows would be shut, but they'd always be in the house. I called the pest control company and explained our situation, and that the flies just kept coming back. They said that they'd send some people over shortly. When they got there, the guy in charge told me that it seems like a common case of an animal getting stuck in the walls or the roof, and dying. He said that they would inspect the house so that we wouldn't have to get fumigated and just have the same problem later. After about 30 minutes, he called me to the side of the house and showed me the problem. There was a hole in the roof, and it looked like it had been there for a while now. It was about the size of a volleyball, but kind of an oval shape. I had no idea how I'd missed it. But thinking back on it now, the person who had sold us the house had not shown us this side up close, and there are a lot of trees and bushes pushing up against that side, so it isn't that noticeable. The guy said that a raccoon or something probably went into the roof, got stuck, and had died. He said that they would inspect it, but they'd have to make the hole bigger so that they could fit inside the roof, seeing that the pull-down ladder to our attic had gotten stuck somehow. At this point in time, I didn't care. I just wanted my house completely fly free. About three minutes went by after they had made the hole bigger and one of their guys went in. Then I heard him yell, I found your problem. He came out of the hole with a garbage bag that smelled absolutely terrible. 
and what followed him was a swarm of black flies. Reluctantly, I looked inside the bag, and there were several raccoon corpses. He said he'd found them huddled together, and for some reason they must have killed each other, because they were all bloodied and scratched up. After a few more days of spraying at the house and a carpenter coming by to seal up the hole in the roof, everything was back to normal, and my family was relieved. That was until about three weeks later. I woke up to the sound of buzzing in my ears and I turned on the light in my room, and there were several big black flies buzzing around the room. Learning from my past encounter with the pests, I figured that something had died again. I got up and started to search the house to see if I could find anything, but there was nothing. And as the time went by, there were just more flies. I moved to check the attic last, because I figured there was no way a raccoon was stuck in it again, at least not this soon. I moved to the attic hatch and reached up to pull down the ladder. But the guy that was up there to get the raccoons either didn't know the ladder was stuck or he didn't even care enough to try and fix it, because it was still stuck. I wasn't fond of the idea of having to call the pest control company again for basically the exact same situation that I was just in, and having them cut another hole in my roof, so I just decided to grab onto the string and pull as hard as I could. I have no idea what that string is made of, and I don't know what that door was stuck on, but I was pulling as hard as I could and that door did not budge at all and the string didn't even snap. I eventually said screw it and decided to just put my entire weight on it. When I did, I heard something creak and before I realized it, I was falling backwards as the attic hatch swung open. I landed on my back with a thud and before I could even get up, I felt something fall on top of me. I looked up to see that it was a blanket, but it was far too heavy and I realized that there was something inside. The smell hit my nose before I even moved to see what was inside the blanket, and I felt my stomach start to turn. I opened the blanket and my eyes started to water, but it wasn't from the smell. On the inside of the blanket, there was a body. The decomposing body of a small child. I sit there, stunned at the sight before me. Then my wife came out of our room rubbing the sleep out of her eyes and asking what's happening. Then she saw what was in my lap. She let out a blood-curdling scream that made me jump, and that sent the corpse tumbling, sending maggots, blood, and bugs all over the floor. The kids were about to come out of their room when I sent them back and told them to call the cops. My wife was shaking, and I had to try to calm her down before she had a panic attack, which wouldn't be unwarranted if I was to be honest. The cops arrived and I explained what happened, and how the body fell out of the attic. I was obviously the first person on their suspect list, but after they investigated, they found evidence saying that the boy was living in the attic for a while, and he was apparently stealing food from the kitchen. They found empty water bottles, some breadcrumbs, and even some chip bags, but he couldn't get food after the attic door had gotten stuck. When that happened, he started to lure animals into the attic with the remaining food that he had left, then he killed and ate them. But when the man went into the attic to get the raccoons, he must have hidden in some of the boxes in the attic. Then, when the attic had gotten fixed, he didn't have any food left, and he starved to death. They found out that his name was Michael Brown from his dental records. What makes me even more sad for the poor boy is that his parents didn't even report him missing, and the cops said that the boy had scars and bruises all over his body. His parents were arrested and his siblings are now in the system. I feel so sad for the poor boy, and wish that we had found him sooner. But he must have thought that we'd have sent him back to his abusive home if he had revealed himself. Hello once again, and thank you for listening to my first story of 2019. This has been Big Black Flies, written by Onyx the Madman. I hope that you've enjoyed this more realistic creepypasta. Please consider subscribing. It will truly help out my channel tremendously. And while you're at it, hit that like button if you've enjoyed the story and share the video so that you can help my channel grow. If you want to ask me some questions about my stories, you can leave me a comment, or you can just shoot me a tweet. All of my important links are in the description down below, so feel free to check that out. Anyway, that's all from me, and I hope to see you next time when I bring you another creepy tale from a world much like your own.